hello everyone and welcome to the Enterprise Challenge Finals 2021. It's great to see so many of you here this afternoon um, and I hope you can have a, a fantastic time. Uh, so um, I'm Rachel Brown, I'm head of the Generator, which is our student enterprise centre at the university. Um, a bit of housekeeping before we start, uh, we've got a big audience today, so please keep your cameras off and keep yourself muted um, unless you're one of uh, unless you're about to talk if you're one of these students today or one of our judges so this is the 10th year of the enterprise challenge so we have had literally thousands of students now uh, taking part in the competition uh, pitching original ideas for new businesses and new social enterprises and learning a few skills along the way so it's the 10th year of the competition, but it's the first year of the competition that we have run entirely online from start to finish. I hope it's the last that we have to do like this because I would love to see you all um, in person for some networking, but despite being online, it's gone really well and engagement has actually been higher than ever. So the competition began back in October and we launched it with an event called GRE Startup which was a one day hack where students got the chance to find business partners, pitch ideas and learn all about design thinking and how they can apply that to their ideas. So that event was run by Jamal and Daniel, who were actually two of our winners from the Enterprise Challenge in 2019. So since they won the competition, uh, not only have they set up a digital marketing agency successfully, but they've also come back to the university to help our students through workshops, and they've provided phenomenal support and inspiration to them. They're also mentors of this year's competition. So if you're a student taking part today or you've taken part uh, before today, we want this to be the start of your journey with us, not the end. And we work really extensive, extensively with our alumni because we really want to work with students to make sure that we are uh, delivering the content that you want to see. And we really try to create um, a sustainable community of entrepreneurs. So we received over 100 applications to this competition in December, and we selected 70 of those to take forward to stage two of the competition, where they were matched with a mentor via our first ever online speed mentor matching event. Um, and then in January and December, um, January and February, uh, they took part in a series of six workshops, which helped them to turn their initial business ideas into the fully fledged business concepts and businesses that you're going to see today. And we've got students represented from a variety of subjects, including uh, nursing, international business, civil engineering, software engineering, advertising, marketing, law. Uh, logistics and transport management, uh, science and aquaponics, and they range all the way from first year to PhD. Uh, so you are seeing a real snapshot of the students that we've got at the university today. And so what are they pitching for? We've got a fantastic range of prizes today. Uh, we've got a total pool of £14,000. We've got a top prize of £5,000 cash. Uh, we've got two prizes of two and a half thousand pounds, which are very generously sponsored by Santander, who have sponsored our enterprise activities over a number of years. We've also got another sponsor, Engineers in Business, who are sponsoring us for the third time this year with a three thousand pound cash prize. And that goes to a student from the engineering school or from an engineering related subject. And then we also have two five hundred pound prizes, which are our audience vote prizes, which you decide. Um, so we've already had over 2,000 votes for our Audience Choice Awards. That was based on the pre-votes we opened up based on their pitches. But you've got another chance to vote again today. Uh, so the vote today is all about who's pitched the best and who's actually answered the judges' questions the best today. So it's a separate voting link and we'll be counting up the votes separately. Uh, so there's lots on today. Uh, so the full schedule of what is happening is you are gonna see 10 pitches um, from our students followed by judges' questions. We're then gonna open up the new Slido link and I'll give you details of how to vote following all the pitches. We're then really pleased to have our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Jane Harrington with us today, who is gonna say a few words. Then while the judges deliberate, uh, we're going to have a few talks to let you know how you can get involved with the generator, whether you're a student, uh, whether you're a member of staff, or whether you're an external stakeholder. And then finally, we're going to announce the winners. So before we move on to our first pitch, um, I'd like to introduce our judges. 
Uh, we're really pleased today to have judges with us who've got an extensive range of entrepreneurial experience between them. And not only that, they're all Greenwich alumni, either from their first or second degrees. So can I start by introducing Peter Lavoie? And would you like to say a few words about who you are? Um, I'm Peter Lavoie. Um, I'm pleased to be on this panel for the uh, third year um, after completing my MA at Greenwich in English Literature back in 2019. Um, I'm chairman and co-founder of a business called Rocket, uh, which is has 20 million turnover, makes premium desserts for M&S and uh, Waitrose and so on. Um, and I've also started seven other firms and advised others and realized interest in six of them. Um, so um, I've ple been pleased to see some good business plans today and uh, look forward to uh, hearing them in person or not in person, but in video. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Peter. And next up, uh, we've got Rinish Myers. Would you like to say a few words? Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for having me. So my name is Ranish Myers, uh, and I'm a financial expert. Um, I founded Money Heave, which is a financial coaching service where we help uh, individuals transform their relationship with money. So I was a graduate. Uh, I graduated from the University of Greenwich in 2014. I studied accounting and finance and left with a first class degree. So it's an absolute pleasure being back here and um, yeah, really excited to see the pitches live. I've gone through all your presentations and I'm impressed. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ranish. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Byron Cole, would you like to say a few words? Thank you so much, Rachel. So hi, my name is Byron. Uh, as Rachel mentioned, I'm a Greenwich alumni. This is my second year of judging. I've been in business now for the last 14 years. Along my journey, I've achieved many accolades I wouldn't have thought possible, including um, helping many of my mentees become financially free, turning six, seven and eight figures in their businesses. Uh, I'm an award-winning entrepreneur. Some of my business interests include construction recruitment, uh, where turning over 6.4 million at its peak. Uh, I'm interested also in uh, property development. Uh, I have an Afro-Caribbean fruit and veg business. Uh, I have a luxury chauffeur business uh, with my fleet, including Rolls Royces, Bentleys, Range Rovers, to name a few. Uh, I co-chair currently at uh, London's largest um, homeless charity uh, and of course I work extensively with uh, Greenwich University with a number of different initiatives. I also uh, wrote a best-selling book called Self Made which is a business book which helps people start, grow, scale and develop their businesses and I've got another book coming out um, at the end of this year with Penguin so that's a very short synopsis of myself. Okay, uh, thank you, Byron. So uh, moving on to our first pitch of today, we have Bradley pitching Barrier Free World. Hello, my name is Brad. In 2011, I suffered from a stroke which left me with a left side of weakness. I also have dyslexia and I have a vision of creating a barrier free world for people with disabilities. One problem that people with disabilities face is something known as the disabled tax. This is the extra set of money personal has to spend by the best and charity on average is of six hundred pounds extra a month, which is a ridiculous amount of money if you ask me. My solution is to use the power of 3D printers to produce equipment that is both affordable and of good quality to help these conditions. One of my solutions that I currently have available on the market is a dyslexic reading ruler. This ruler works by having a slit in the middle of it, which allows only one line of text through at a time. People with dyslexia and ADHD often get confused with the line above and line below. This ruler combats that. Though I have some competitors in this space, I offer my products at a cheaper price than they are, more colors and better functionality with more designs coming out in the future. If I were to win the enterprise challenge, I would use the money to buy more 3D printers to upscale my production, as well as increase the amount of products that I have available. 
I would also hire staff to help with distribution, legal advice, and web development. Furthermore, I print in a material called polylactic acid. This is made from corn, which means that it is least carbon neutral, as well as biodegradable, which is just an added bonus. My business is viable, as since I started trading these rulers in September, I've sold over 200 products. Now, in February, I sold 58 rulers just in that month alone, which is just over one fourth of all the products that I've ever sold, which is just amazing. And I should hit my goal of selling a thousand products by the end of this year. As you can see, Zoe, a mother, bought this for her child and she absolutely loves it. This is one of many comments that I have gotten from my rulers. And if you believe in my business, I believe that I can create a barrier-free world for people with disabilities and really make a big impact to their lives. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your time. Okay, uh, so thank you for the pitch. And can we start with the first judge's question from Peter? You, you charged £2.50. I wondered if post-launch you should charge a little bit more. I, I've had this feedback from um, a number of people within um, certain different spaces, but the idea of charging more for something like this is, is exactly what I'm attempting to combat, um, because within the world of disability, often things are far more expensive than what they should be, you know, uh, upwards of of a thousand times more expensive and and this idea is to combat sort of that upscaling um so i like to keep my prices as low as i can thank you for your question um okay thank you peter um, and uh, can we move on to ranish for the second question yeah, sure. Bradley, that was really good. I have the gift of dyslexia as well, so I might need one of those rulers. <laughs> um, but my question for you is, um, I noticed you had very little uh, budget for marketing. Was there a reason for that? I think um, it would be good to advertise and promote the benefits of those who have dyslexia, why they should use a ruler. Um, thank you so much for the question. Um, that is a really interesting idea and something that I have explored. Um, currently, how I am advertising is through something like uh, eBay and Etsy and sort of self-promotion within that um, because within each um, package that I send out, I have a, a thank you note and a, you know, if you want any more assistance, please let me know, that kind of stuff. And sort of letting it advertise by community rather than through paid advertisements at the moment because i feel like that's a lot more powerful to say oh this really helps me here's the person that that has supplied this to me because uh, a lot of people with with disabilities especially something with, with dyslexia is we kind of get lumped in the same category at school so we have dyslexic friends um because we were all taught extra english so one thing that helped one person might help you know three or four or five people um, so that's kind of how I'm targeting that at the moment. But certainly, I think in the future, as things grow and develop, I, I'd love to get some more advertising space. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, and Byron, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, sure. Bradley, first of all, great pitch. I love the product and congratulations on the sale so far. Um, I guess my question is just trying to understand a little bit more about, you know, what if you was to win this and buy that 3D printer that you're looking for? how that would aid you in the business and essentially how it would help you get more sales. I'm trying to understand it a little bit more. So that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that question. Um, so currently I have two 3D printers myself already um, and, and these are awesome uh, little machines. Um, so what I'm, what I'm looking at is upscaling and increasing the amount of products that I can offer. Um, so I, I'm looking at getting, say, two more 3D printers, which would offer me um, the ability to print, say, 60 rulers a day, which obviously increases productivity um, by 100%, uh, which is fantastic. Um, but also further additions to that, which is like a splicing soft, a splicing machine, which enables me to print in, say, two to four colors um, so that I can make a real differentiation between the numbers that I have at the top of the ruler and everything else. 
and that's kind of how I'm how I'm looking at sort of improving the product in in one of those senses, just to make that sort of real impact. Equally, I can then print things like um, logos for universities if they fancy um, handing them out at open days, which would again help to further increase sales in the future. Okay, great, thanks. And um, okay, thank you. Uh, so that's all we've got uh, time for in terms of questions. Uh, well done, Bradley. And our second pitch of today is Faustina, who is going to be pitching Ecochini Activewear. Hi, my name is Faustina, and today I would like to introduce you my sustainable activewear business idea. Did you know that every second a truck full of clothes ends up in landfills and that fashion industry is responsible for 92 million tons of waste a year? This sounds scary, however it can be changed. First of all, slow life and slow fashion. Concerned about the environment and about the future, I created is Ecokini, an activewear brand made for women that combines style, sustainability, quality and healthy lifestyle. I believe that market built of women who are ambitious, independent, strong and aware can be inspiration for others. This is why Ecokini's target market are women who are interested in yoga and gym but also women who are looking for high quality product in the market. Also customers who are aware of the problem caused by fast fashion. Ecokini puts main focus on using recyclable fabrics and demonstrating eco-friendly production. This is why our products are 100% sustainable, which means they are safe for skin, they are free of toxic substances, and they have SPF 50 as well. At the same time, we would like to focus on promoting good consumption patterns, raising customer awareness at the same time, but also decreasing consumption levels. As an employer, we would like to create fair workplaces and provide excellent work conditions. The brand will reach customers online, where the main focus will be on social media appearance and Instagram will be the main platform. Why am I the right person to turn this idea into reality? Well, I believe that starting from little examples such as new business models, supply chains or trends can make a big difference in a few years from now on. Winning in the price challenge could help me to start my sustainable mission. At Ecokini, I would like to promote slowness as quality for me, quality means living healthy, being natural, and respectful to work of others, regardless of latitude. That's how I understand resource extraction, and that's the message I would like to send through Ecokini products. Thank you. Okay, so moving to our judges' questions. Uh, Ranish, would you like to start with a question for Faustina? Sure. Hello. Congratulations. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I really loved some of your pieces, actually. Um, so, yeah, so well done. Um, the question I had for you um, was, I noticed with your research, um, you, you asked um, females about uh, would they be willing to pay more money for clothing? And I just wondered, obviously your prices for the pieces, I, I believe it's about £70 for a leggings. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I just wondered, would they be willing to pay that? You wasn't very specific. You just said they'll be willing to pay more. So I wanted to know whether the average 27 year old would be willing to pay £70 for a pair of leggings. Well, so considering the fact that um, customers are very used to pay uh, up to £40 for leggings from fast fashion companies, uh, 70 pounds for leggings is quite a uh, high price, I would say. That's, that's what I mean, that they are uh, ready to pay more for, um, for, for a piece um, because for them would be an invest, investment for a lifetime because this means quality. This means something 
like a piece of luxury, but at mm -hmm. the same time, I would like to show that sustainability can be affordable for everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Uh, so moving on to uh, Byron, would you like to ask the second question? Yeah, sure. Um, so my question is about the market, really. I, I know the athleisure market and also the sustainability fashion market is, is massive, right? Um, so how do you make yourself different? How do you different, differentiate yourself from, from your competitors, essentially, to, to make some noise in this very crowded market? So my plan is to use the highest quality fabrics that they have a very good technology, I would say. So they provide SPF 50, which based on my research, I didn't find a brand that provides such feature in the fabrics. So I would like to make aware the customers that um, just like we apply SPF 50 uh, on our face or as any SPF to protect from the sun, it's important to also protect any part of our body. Um, so using our uh, products, our customers can actually take care of the environment and uh, also uh, of themselves. So uh, this is something that um, is a very uh, unique, something that I didn't find um, in my research so far. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And okay, thank you. So final question uh, from Peter. Uh, yeah, two thoughts. Um, first of all, what work have you done on uh, getting costings for the product? And two, why don't you look at the 46 year old market too, because they may have more money uh, than the 20 year olds? Excuse me, could you repeat the question because something uh, got interrupted? Have you done any costings on the product? And why don't you look at the 40 to 60 year old market as they have may have more money than the 20 year olds? So um, my target market are women aged 20 to 40, according to my business plan. This is how I would like to start and get this interest among the customers, uh, raising awareness at the same time. Raising awareness means that young people especially need this vibe that we need to change something when we, we need to change our spending habits and have better choices in this case sustainable fashion um i'm guessing that uh, 60 years old uh, women they are aware mature women um but of course um with the time i would be uh, more than happy to expand the range for also 60 years old Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. And moving, um, moving on to our next pitch, uh, we have uh, Siva pitching Kumba. Hello, this is Shivaj Sethi, founder and CEO of Kumba, Ethiopia. Food packaging industry is one of the biggest industry, and in UK, single use packaging plays a vital role. In a day, approximately 95 million cups of coffee are being consumed by the people in UK. After drinking the coffee, we throw the cups in the bin. We never think where the cup is going to travel next. This is, that is the recycling unit. Recycling is a very huge and expensive process. Coming from a business background where we manufacture paper cups for the past 17 years, I know how much harm it causes to the earth. And also approximately only 20 to 40% of the single use packaging waste are being recycled properly. I wanted to come up with a product which has zero recycling process. After research and hard work, I have my edible table bar, which is a zero waste product made from 100% natural ingredients. After it, uh, eating your food, you can eat your plate or bowl as in dessert, or else you can dissolve it in water or can be fed as animal feed. If not, it completely degrades in 20 days of time if it's thrown in the landfill. It has been approved and certified as safe to eat by the Indian Institute of Food Packaging Technology, which is located in Chennai in India. I have two patents, one for the product invention and the other for the heat resistance of the food for a long time in the container. There are very less edible tablewares in the market and uh, I stand completely out from them as I have a huge varieties of products like cups, plates, bowls, and trays as well. These products comes in different sizes and in different flavors. 
uh, which is also less priced compared to them because of my own machine technology. Kumba is already making profits in India for the past few months. As UK gave me a wonderful higher education, I wish to do something in return. And this is the only opportunity to contribute to build an eco-friendly nature with my zero waste edibility to the product. My target market in UK is all the street food markets, cafes, fish and chip shop, desert shop, and other catering companies. If I win this GRE enterprise challenge, it would really help me to set my manufacturing unit in UK with all the legal regulations and the required certificates also for the marketing. Every step makes a change, and this is my first step to uh, launch my product in UK. Join my hands to implement the safe to earth packaging. And cheers, mates. Jenny. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to judges' questions, uh, can we start with a question from Byron this time? Yes, yeah, so I've got two questions. So first of all, I'd like to know a little bit more about the, the sales numbers in India, but also on your um, business plan, there was a question I wanted to understand about the investment. It says there you've invested £60,000 over investment. I wanted to know whether that has been done already. If so, what that's been spent on. So it's not yeah, been done. So, there, so therefore, where do you plan on getting this £60,000 from? Obviously, we're restricted with, with what we can do here today. Sure, sure. So that's a nice question. So answering your first question, uh, I'm having, as this is a new uh, invention, I'm having a huge demand for the product as well in India. So I can produce like 25,000 pieces of product every day for a two shift. And I'm having a demand like uh, twice or thrice more than my production in India. And uh, for the second question, so uh, 60, that was a rough figure. And... Uh, uh, around like half of it I can invest on my own and the rest I'm looking for the investors. And at the starting stage, I will not be investing such a big amount. So right now I'm giving trials samples to UK as I did my master's over there. So I have many contacts and uh, they are willing to get my product. So I'm sending samples right now. So there are like different steps to uh, get my product into UK. First, I have to uh, get approval for the product to sell in UK. So certification process, then comes the marketing then comes the distribution. So there are like several stages. So stage by stage, I have to invest. And yeah, like 30K I'll be investing on my own and the rest I have to look for the investors. And I'll be like putting manufacturing machine in the second year. So the big amount will be coming in the future years. So I can uh, scale, then I can put my profit over there. Thank you. Yes. And okay, uh, thank you. So uh, moving to Peter for the next question. How would your prices in the UK compare to those in India? Uh, it's actually uh, very cheap. Like, uh, for an example, if you take 100 rupees, it's one pound over there. So uh, when I manufacture here and I take it over there, it's very, uh, like, a very less cost. But the transportation is not that easy. So as it is an edible one, it breaks while transporting. So that's the only point I'm setting the manufacturing unit over there. And uh, talking about the pricing, I can uh, give, like, uh, 25 p a piece, a cup. So a one ton ml cup with a double wall, which holds hot liquid for like one half. I can give it for 25p as of now, while, while like transporting my product from India to London. So, so if they set my- 25p for a cup, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, and then a uh, final question from uh, Ranish. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say, what's your why? why? Why did you decide to set this up? What's driving you? Uh, just be good to understand that a little bit. Yeah, so I basically come from a business background. I said that in the uh, business pitch. So uh, uh, we do manufacture paper cups for the past 17 years. And uh, recycling is a very huge process. And recycling is not done in India. To be very frank, we don't have uh, separate bins to put the recycling units. So there's no recycling unit in India. So that's where my uh, thinking started. So I thought uh, paper cup is a very good alternative when I was childhood. Then I came to know there's no recycling happening. So these all the paper cups with the PE coated uh, doesn't get recycled. It is a stored uh, waste. It's a land, uh, landfilling waste. So then I started to uh, bring up things which is uh, like more environment friendly. So I started my uh, invention like I started to do uh, with clay, mud, containers with clay and mud. So it was a failure. Then I started like improving, improving. And this was a product of a uh, research of five years. So yeah, that's how it came. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Siva. And our next pitch of today is uh, Mahid pitching my lab. Our services and delivery businesses have grown massively over this pandemic, with a market now worth 8.5 billion. So if I ask you, have you had your Amazon order delivered today? You'd probably say yes. And if I ask you, have you had your delivery takeaway delivered today? You'd probably say yes too. And the reason for this is because these services are so easy and simple to book straight from the smartphone. And that's why I've created my lab, an on demand service platform that allows you to book a range of different services straight to your doorstep. We just don't have the time to make phone calls, go through long quote forms and wait for responses only to be given ridiculous prices. MyLab solves this problem. MyLab puts the customer in control. You choose the date, the time, and the location. We come to you and carry out the service. So no more waiting around and poor service and ridiculous prices. Let these services happen around you while you get on with things that are more important. MyLab is an on-demand service provider for a range of different services currently operating in London. So that means you can book a range of different services that suit your lifestyle straight to your doorstep. So if you're like me and you love shoes and sneakers, you probably want to keep them nice and clean. And that's why we introduced a cleaning service that comes and picks up your shoes, gets them clean and drop back off to you. Or if you live in halls or if you've lived in halls, you know it's an absolute nightmare to get your clothes clean. There's just not enough machines for everyone to use. That's why my lab, we eradicate that problem completely. We come and pick up your clothes, get them clean and dropped off straight back to you. With the success of our pre-launch period, now is the right time to take MyLab to the next level. With the growing list of services and the growing list of service providers, we're ready to take London by storm and hopefully the rest of the UK too. That's why I'm going to use £400 to cover the legalities of our business. This includes terms and conditions for all the services provided, the privacy policy and other contractual agreements between myself and the service providers. £2,500 will be used to complete the Android app. 20% of our users are expected to be Android users. By having both the Android app and the iOS app side by side, this will give the brand a better value. It will also mean a complete launch and ultimately give greater revenue. Finally, £2,100 will be used for marketing and content. This will mean a strong 30-day social media campaign which leads up to our launch and also after. Working with influencers to also create buzz and excitement, some promotions and discounts, marketing material which includes vehicle branding, freebies and a national flyer drop. Not forgetting amazing video and and image content. This will all take my lab on a successful journey. I want to thank you for your time, but I won't leave you just there. Here's a promo code for when we do launch. Okay, so moving on to judges' questions, and can we start this time with Peter? I, I think it's great. I mean, the the so you know services we all need and you you've made some sales already um i was less clear on what services you have sold already it looks like you've certainly sold some uh car cleaning but have you sold the other services too um yeah so at the moment we've got four main categories uh, that's based on lifestyle so we go from cars shoes clothing uh car shoes clothing and electronics so that's the top four uh, we have tried mainly the car because that's been more in demand because of the car wash closures in the UK uh, due to the pandemic. But we've also like slowly are starting to test um, the other services as well at the moment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and so should we move to Ranesh for the second question? Sure. Um, hi, well done. I'm actually really impressed with um with, with it all actually and uh, it's very practical everything you said I can I can see it um my question for you would be um you you noted in your research that during lockdown delivery services have 10x so uh post lockdown whenever that may be um how do you think do you think that will have an impact on your, your business I think it works perfectly in my favor um I've also looked into like other you know what other companies said in terms of this all like delivery and but the thing is that bio behavior is changing so it doesn't matter if we're in lockdown or not lockdown i think being in lockdown has given people the opportunity to know that these services exist and the convenience that it can bring to their life so i think going forward it's actually it's actually amazing for me because now people we're going to launch you know towards the end of lockdown people are going to know more about the brand and of course when they are locked down they're going to use it for their daily life so it's a win-win for me um the bio behavior has changed people prefer to book from their smartphone you know, just same way we used to go to the chicken shop or wherever to get our food, we can now do it for an app. And I think you should be able to do the same thing, the same thing from your smartphone as well. You know, no more cancelling work, no more, you know, away from family time. I think, you know, do these things uh, in the background while you get on with your life. 
Thank you. Okay, and moving on to a question from Byron. Yeah, so my question is about understanding a bit more about your partners. How many um, partners have you managed to sign up so far? And how does that look like in terms of scaling, assuming you don't deliver some of the, most of these services yourself, the car wash and the laundry, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so great question. So at the beginning, um, it kind of started with me doing car wash myself. I used to get my cousins, we used to do car washes. Uh, we realized that because of the pandemic, car washes were closed and a lot of people on car washes. So I thought, right, the way to you know expand this is why not provide other services that can also come to you, and which is why I created my lab in the end. Um, so at the moment, you know, we've got postcodes in London. We're just covering solely London. So the service providers that I partnered with, you know, we've got about 13 on it's growing. Um, we'll kind of cover each corner of London. So if that makes sense. So it's only like north and northwest, uh, south and southeast. You know, postcodes like that, they're allocated. So if jobs come in through those postcodes, uh, the specific service provider will be allocated that job based on that area. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mahid. So moving on to our fifth, fifth pitch of today, and we have Amina with Lexi. Hello, my name is Amina and welcome to Lexi. So around 10% of the UK population and about 700 million people worldwide have dyslexia. So dyslexia, is a neurological condition that has a significant impact on people's education and prevents people from reaching their full potential. People with dyslexia rely heavily on their smartphone to help them to read, write, spell check, and do many other things. But they are unable to use the phone at certain places, such as at work and in hospitals and at schools. And when this is the case, it can be stressful and it's challenging. And many people with dyslexia, like myself, would rather give up and miss an opportunity than to embarrass ourselves. And that is the problem I'm trying to fix. There are many different toolkits at the, on the market, but these tools are often outdated and difficult to use and very expensive. And you often need multiple toolkits to just carry out one activity. Why me? Well, I'm a, I'm a living example of someone with severe dyslexia and I understand that the tools that are currently available on the market and know them to be unsuitable for the needs of people who want to lead a normal life. So my idea is to create a device called Lexi. So Lexi is a portable smart device that's integrated with all the different and latest softwares and tools to help and support people with dyslexia. So this device would allow users to customize the application toolkit where features and settings can be configured to suit and meet the user's needs. So why would it work? So Lexi will work because it's a unique product that is not in the market currently. And because most people with dyslexia rely heavily on their smartphone, Lexi provides the same function as a smartphone, but with all the application that supports them to carry out their everyday activity. Lexi is modern, is user friendly, and it will allow users to feel more confident when using this device in public environment. So I aim to make money through sales, selling to individual consumers, as well as education and healthcare organisation. So the money from the competition would enable me to meet software developers and to seek investors. So the aim of Lexi is to combat and break down the barriers and to transform the lives of many sufferers of dyslexia around the world. Thank you for taking the time to listen. So moving on to judges' questions, and can we start with Ranish this time? Well done, well done, well done. Um, again, I, as I mentioned earlier, I, I have the gift of dyslexia, so I'm, I'm really intrigued in these type of products and, um, and things like that. But I, I was a little bit confused because when I was reading your, your documents, I saw you, it's like an integrated virtual assistant. Uh, so I actually have two questions for you. First question is, how much would it cost the consumer to purchase this product? And then the second question is, 
So you would, it's a separate device with, so people would have a phone plus the Lexis, is that right? Okay, thank you for that. So I'm planning to sell um, to consumers like starting at 90 pounds to just make it really affordable for people because a lot of the devices on the market are like looking at 250 pounds. And to get these devices, I've got like about 10 or 15 devices where the student finance had to pay for that. Otherwise I couldn't afford it myself. So I wanted something really affordable for people. Um, so yeah, it is, um, it's like a, a device that has everything in it. The software is all in one place. So rather than you having to carry around so many different devices, like when I go to work now, I've carried five devices on me and that just draws a lot more attention to you even more. And a lot of these devices are are really hard to use I had to be trained to use these devices so yeah <laughs> yeah awesome that sounds good yeah like yourself when I was at uni I had like a dictaphone I had a few bits yeah. so yeah I, I can appreciate that thank you welcome um okay so our second question can we go to Byron Yes, sure. Thank you so much for the pitch. Um, so looking through your documents, you've indicated you need, you know, uh, £500,000 to make this work. Um, when we looked at when I looked at all the breakdown. So I'm just trying to understand how you plan on raising this uh, capital, but also a question about the sale price. So I understand £90 is what we're hoping to sell it at. Um, what, what's the actual manufacturing cost of each device? That'll be interesting to know as well. Um, to be honest, I actually haven't got that. Um, uh, what's the other question? I'm so sorry. Don't worry. Okay, so so how do you plan on raising, you know, half a million pounds? Okay, so, um, so yeah. So um, one of the ways I'm planning to do that is through um, work, um, getting through investment. So mm -hmm. one of the companies I'm actually looking at is a company called. Um, e Emotive, um, which is like a global healthcare communication agents, um, agency, uh, which inspires to change uh, that has a positive impact on people's health. So I'm planning um, for them to sign pace me to investors and working with them would mean that um, um, because I sh so sorry, I share um, my business model aligns perfectly with theirs. Um, so that's another way I'm um, planning to do. And also um, crowdfunding is another way that I'm planning to go through this. I know it does like, it sounds like a lot, um, but I thought that was more realistic than to say something like 50, because the software developers, um, you know, that cost, and, um, they, they start, their salary is like 50,000 a year alone. So, yeah, that's why I've got a, such a big figure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so final question from Peter. And Amina, when you answer this final question, you'll only have quite a quick time, about 30 seconds, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah, as, as well as the um, manufacturing cost, I was going to ask about the development cost um, uh, because at the moment it's, it's unclear why it should be half a million pounds in total or a higher figure or a lower figure. Um, mm. So what work have you done on, on development costs? Um, I'm just going to be honest, I haven't really done much um, because I feel like I lack the ex um, experience in that. Um, but I feel like once I get in contact with the investors and I um, work with software developers, then I know more. And I think that's what the 5,000 will help me um, just to meet and use it to like um, as my expenses to meet these people. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks, Amina. So moving on to our sixth pitch, uh, we've got Ollie and Harry. Um, and can I just remind everyone to turn your cameras off if you're not um, answering judges' questions? Thank you. Hi, I'm Harry. And I'm Ollie. We're the co-founders of Faster Social, a TikTok strategy and social media management agency that aims to make social media an integral and valuable component of our clients' marketing. So a while back, we were sitting on our rooms on FaceTime, bored out of our minds in lockdown, and thought, why not check out some jobs we could potentially pursue after university? After scrolling through way too many adverts, we found there was always one key problem, one key denominator, and we believe it's something most students struggle with. It's the dreaded E-word, experience. 
In these troubling times, it's harder than ever to gain industry experience. So we're tackling this issue head on and hiring marketing students as our social media managers. This gives them the opportunity to gain real industry experience and also help them stand out in the crowd when they graduate. Our target audience are small B2C businesses located in Southeast London, whose target audience are Generation Z. We target businesses who have no social media, have social media but don't use it to their potential, or the business owners don't have the time or funds to manage their own social media. But why would businesses trust students to manage their socials? Well, hiring students gives us a competitive advantage in communicating effectively with our clients' young target market. Also, they'll be the first generation of social media natives, giving us an insight that other agencies will struggle to match. So why will it work? Firstly, we've worked with a variety of businesses in different marketing roles. Therefore, we've developed a clearer understanding of how to deliver our service effectively. Secondly, due to our staff being employed freelance, we can offer a more affordable service than larger agencies who hire full-time staff. In addition, we'll have limited outgoing costs as we require no raw materials, no product stock and no office space. All we need is Wi-Fi and a computer. We've completed primary research with 69 university students to find out whether they'd be willing to work for us. We found out that students value experience over more money and more working hours. This supports our business model. After considering the questions in the semi-finals, we re-evaluated our pricing. For social media management, we'll offer packages ranging from £100 to £250 and our TikTok strategy will be a set fee of £120. If we're fortunate enough to win, we plan on spending £2,000 on personal development and advertising for short-term business and a further £3,000 on web development and content creation tools for long-term business. We've already created our logo, tagline, brand guidelines and all service pricing. We've also created a TikTok account that's generated over 200,000 views to help with brand exposure. By the end of March, we'll hopefully have our website up and by the end of April, we'll start personally reaching out to businesses. After the semi-finals, we decided to explore new ways to develop our service further. When working with new clients, it can take weeks to go from the initial point of contact to the work starting. So we want to develop a smart platform that will help streamline and automate this process. We believe we have created a unique and mutually beneficial business for both clients and employees. We hope you agree. So can we start our judges' questions with Byron this time? Yes, yeah, sure. So it was a great, great pitch, I must say. Um, but I was struggling to understand the actual core purpose. So is it a recruitment? Are you offering a recruitment service to the providers? If not, can you give me a bit more clarity on that? Uh, of course, I'll take the question. Um, so the purpose of the business is we're a marketing agency who focuses on making TikTok strategies and social media management for small businesses. But the idea with the students is that our team of the people who work for us and complete the work are going to be students. So the idea is to bring in as many students as we can and it'll help them gain experience um, to, for when they graduate university. So, so we, we know how difficult it is to get experience whilst at university. Um, so we're aiming to help as many students as we can gain valid industry experience for when they graduate. So digital marketing agency with your core recruitment being students. Exactly, yes. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> Okay, um, and so can we go to uh, Peter for the next question? Yeah, you mentioned you'd had 200,000 views. I wondered how many business inquiries you've had. Um, well, our TikTok itself is a little bit separate to the business. It's, um, it's not supposed to be like solely connected to it. So we haven't had any business inquiries because what we've been doing is we've been basically showcasing our journey and trying to help other people out with their business as well and stuff like that, just to build brand exposure so people know who we are, but we haven't actually started reaching out to clients or anything yet. So when we start doing that, then we'll probably advertise our service on TikTok, for example, or on Instagram, all of, all the other uh, social sites. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. And for our final question, I think it's uh, Ranish. Thank you. Well done to you both, very fun um, pitch. Um, I just, I had a little look on your social media and I, on Instagram and I didn't, I didn't see anything. Um, so as a social media company, I, I'm just curious to know why, why you don't have any post or why, why there's not much happening. Um, and it'd be good to just hear what results you've had so far as well with, with the businesses that you are supporting. Um, so we have created our Instagram, of course, but we haven't actually posted anything on there yet because we haven't started working with clients. Um, uh, TikTok is the only actual social media channel that we've put effort into yet. And um, because we're not reaching out to clients, we're not in that position yet. We don't feel we need to dedicate as much time to 
Instagram as we do to creating our proposal templates, audit templates, applying our marketing and uh, things like that. And um, in the same sense, because we haven't officially started working with clients yet, and um, we haven't had any uh, actual business interactions at this point. I'd, I'd also like to add that we haven't finished making the website yet either. So we wanted to get the website up and running, which should be done by the end of April or around mid April. And then we'll start posting on social media and properly like making it all cohesive across all social platforms as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, uh, you. thank you both. Uh, so moving on to Alina, who is gonna be pitching the Green Atom. <laughs> Hello, my name is Alina and I've designed the Green Atom as an additional space for any primary school. Seeing the children and their families struggling since this pandemic started, I thought it must be a way for kids to go to school in healthy, normal conditions for themselves and their teachers. This is when I designed the Green Atom as a solution for the lack of space in primary schools when social distancing applies. The Green Atom is a 50 square meter timber frame building designed with standard panels, floor and roof cassettes, which can be used to build small garden buildings for private clients when schools don't need it anymore. The building is manufactured off-site and delivered as modules or panels. It has a minimal impact on the environment. The simple and standard design with natural finishes makes it suitable for any school ground and can can be accessorized with deck areas, fence, gates, or wooden play areas. The walls can be dismantled into panels and stored for future small private projects. Working as a 3D designer with experience in timber engineering and the passion for sustainable buildings, I've chosen a standard timber frame construction type. The 140 millimeter panels have rigid insulation and can be delivered as closed panels. The floor and the roof are made from eye joists and delivered as cassettes where the site allows. On both exterior and interior side of the panels, I've used natural materials like softwood cladding or plywood. My project brings many benefits to society. First of all, children will have more eco-friendly classroom space during a pandemic with direct access I am planning to use the Kickstart scheme for young people affected by the COVID-19 and apprenticeship 100% funded by the government. The Green Atom has a price of 650 pounds per square meter because it has a standard design, standard materials, and is 90% manufactured off-site. Thank you. So can we start off our judges questions with Peter this time? Yeah, I, I was involved with a business like this once. Um, I mean, there's a lot of competition in, in, in this kind of sector. I just wondered, uh, and you may have answered this in your plan, how you would differentiate yourself from all of that competition and manage to produce at a, a cost that was competitive in the marketplace. First of all, many of the timber frame companies, especially in the south areas, are using bespoke, bespoke designs um, and sometimes bespoke materials. This is why the price is quite high. Um, they also have a huge machinery like um, press trusses or easy joist process or all sorts of machineries. I was just planning to have small workshops using uh, people from local areas who lost their jobs during this pandemic and use as less machinery as possible, only some hand tools and some forklifts, uh, maybe a crane and have like locally distributed in some areas. This is why, um, this is how I, I plan to keep the, the low cost. Thank you. Okay, so uh, moving on to Ranish for the second question. Oh, no worries. Well done, and thank you for your pitch. Um, I'd just like to know why, what, what made you wanna start this, this business? Um, first of all, I lost my job after the first lockdown. 
uh, then I had a friend um, after the first lockdown, um, the schools announced uh, that not all children are allowed to go back to school. So if a classroom has 30 children, uh, they ask their parents to keep one of their children at home, let's say families with two or three children, and only one of them could go back to school. So they can have a 50, 50, uh, 15 children in a classroom because of the social distancing uh, rules. So this has been very, let's say, disturbing for some families, uh, especially, first of all, because of their children, and then because of their jobs, because some of them or most of them lost their jobs working from home or just having to stay at home with their children. So this is one of the reasons. It just, there's a problem and it needs to be fixed. So why not? And this is my, my way of fighting with this pandemic virus. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you. And moving to Byron for a final question. Sure. So I, I imagine this something similar already exists, right? Is that it, fair to say? Yes, but uh, yeah. at a very high uh, price. There at a very are high cost. Some classrooms with bespoke designs and materials for different schools. So they are like uh, luxury uh, designs, not normal standard. Uh, design or normal classroom. So I guess my question then leads on to, have you spoken to any um, institutions, schools that, that may be interested in this? And what has their feedback been if you have? Yes, I've sent some emails. Uh, I'm still waiting some of the replies back, but uno unofficially I have uh, two replies uh, saying that during the lockdown, it's hard to get the right people to sit down and just talk about this but I am keep trying door, door by door and I, I, I'll just uh, try to, to have my final uh, order. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alina. And so moving on to our next pitch, which is Lorenzo with Growing Futures. Large numbers of prisoners every year end up recommitting crimes on their release. This is known as recidivism. Young offenders institutions are prison facilities for young adults, age 15 to 20. Recidivism rates in young offenders are as high as 42.2%. There is an urgent need to break the cycle and reform the system. But how? We need an engaging and educational activity aimed for this class of young adults. Aquaponics is a novel and sustainable technology. Plants receive water from the fish, clean it by growing, and return it to the fish, forming a full cycle. A large number of fish and plants can be grown in aquaponics, including most freshwater fish and crop varieties. Aquaponics has successfully been used in schools as a fun and engaging educational tool, as well as in prisons in the US and Australia, with exceptional results, revitalizing convicts' health, spirit, and career prospects giving them a reason to get out of bed every morning. Our strategy is simple. We set up aquaponic units in young offenders institutions. Then we teach the prisoners aquaponics. This will equip them with new skills and knowledge. Regular contacts with animals and plants will also provide them with therapeutic benefits. We will expand to other facilities in the UK. By receiving training in a variety of farming methods and learning skills in plumbing, animal husbandry, IT, and horticulture, the offender's chances of finding employment will increase and their chances of reoffending decrease. All we need to begin the pilot study is 2,000 pounds for the materials. We will provide the fish and plants needed for the system to run. The hosting institution will provide us with a small room where we can, set, we can set up the system. We have created the first educational IT course on aquaponics. AquaTeach, which will be adapted for young offenders' use. In order to be economically sustainable, we need to make money. After the three-month trial, we will expand to other institutions where we will charge for the service. Several vocational activities are already offered in young offenders' institutions and paid by the institution. We will follow the same scheme. We have picked Downview as our first institution for its horticultural facility. This will allow us to train the horticultural staff, which will then teach aquaponics to the convicts. The prison has a memorandum of understanding with the university, and we have been in touch with the learning and skills manager, which has shown great interest in the idea. 
us at the University of Greenwich are aquaponics experts and the research in many aspects of aquaponics in our aquaponics lab on Stockwell Street. As a PhD student in aquaponics, I know full well the potentials of this amazing technology. We aim to break the cycle of recidivism, ultimately leading ex-convicts with stable employment. We want to be a part of the solution to reduce recidivism in the UK and help those in custody now to a better future. We are growing futures. And can we start on of questions with uh, Ranish this time? Well done, well done. Um, I'm just looking at your um, cash flow forecast and I just noticed that the only real expense that you've got is um, for the PVC pipes and materials. But I just wondered, you know, let's say you, you won this, what, what would be the first, sort of, what would you be doing? Is I'm just kind of thinking, would there not be any expenses for like training? How would you train up the staff to be able to um, provide a good service, basically? The question. Uh, yeah, it, seems, it does seem too good to be true, right? Uh, we actually can provide fish, we can provide plants, we can provide the, uh, the IT course, which has been developed by one of the people in our team. Uh, and uh, so the only real expense is the system, which is very cheap to, to build, uh, to buy and to build. Uh, it uh, uses gravity principles uh, and it's very economical to build. Um, so we, we would only need 2,000 pounds. Uh, then uh, the prison facility, the hosting facility would, um, would give us, would offer us uh, a room to set up the system. And that's really about it. Uh, of, of course, if we win, if, we, if we're, we're given more money, we would uh, pick a bigger system in order to train more people and, uh, and expand. So- um, And will you be doing- Yes, I would we'll be doing the training, uh, except for when uh, um, the young offenders institutions have a, an active horticultural program, in which case we would adopt the strategy of the of the of people from the U.S. and uh, train the trainers, train the horticultural staff, which will then train the uh, the offenders. So train people who already have experience in uh, in gardening and teach them aquaponics, train them in fish husbandry principles, and they will in turn uh, train the offenders. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, moving on to uh, Byron for the next question. Yes, thank you so much for the pitch. Uh, I guess my concern is uh, on questions about the, you know, the, the security element of it. I'm sure there are many security um, concerns potentially for anything that goes into any, any prisons and stuff. So have you spoken, have you got any, you know, have you got any social proof that this already either exists or is even allowed to take place? It is allowed to take place. It's never been done in Europe, and obviously not in the UK either. Uh, but it's been done in the UK, in, in the US and Australia with, with really great results. And uh, one of the advantages of the system is that there are no tools involved. It's a soilless technology. There is no soil involved. Therefore, there are no there is no need for sharp objects or really any uh, any tool to work the land or the soil. Uh, people only need to use their hands and uh, it, it's great for teenagers or young people who get really into this stuff and uh, they, they can see how the fish behave, how plants grow and, and it's very exciting for them. Uh, but there are no uh, biosecurity risks whatsoever and, and, and especially um, uh, no, no, no risks for, uh, for sharp tools or anything of like that sort. So that's, another, that's, a, that's a further advantage to the whole idea. Excellent, thank you. Okay, and moving on to uh, Peter for the final question. Yeah, I think you mentioned though that you had some preliminary discussions with, with Downview anyway, um, and I wasn't quite sure what status, where, where you got to that. Yeah, so we picked Downview uh, for, uh, to set up our trial, our three month trial, since this has never been done uh, here. Uh, and uh, so you started that, have you? Is that a live thing or is it a discussion? Uh, it's an ongoing discussion. They're uh, they're giving us uh, the green light to to start uh, to 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 do this trial, but uh, we uh, we're we're kind of waiting to see whether we we do get the money or not to bring this forward. But uh, um, yeah, um, they we've talked to several facilities, uh, three in total, and they've, they're all been they've all been uh, enthusiastic and they've all been uh, very uh, excited about this. But we picked them. And they're local, are they? Uh, they're in the south of London, close to uh, Croydon, uh, in London area, uh, and there are over 100 um, uh, young offenders institutions in the UK, so there is a 
very a, a great um, potential for expansion Fantastic. and about five in the London area. So yeah, try great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Lorenzo. Uh, so moving on to our penultimate pitch, uh, we have Nina with Easy Palette. Hello everyone, my name is Nina Rovnova and I'm a third year student of Business Logistics and Transport Management. I'm here today to introduce to you Easy Palette as a logistics solution. Let me start off with a small story uh, discussing the problems that people in the logistics sector face on pretty much a daily basis. So imagine you're a small business owner that ships out per week maybe 10 pallets, keeping in mind that a full truck is 24 pallets approximately. Quite unfortunate, just under half a truck full, but you know, regardless of the size, you'll still need to order a full truck, even though you'll have 14 pallet spaces left. And in addition, you'll be paying as if you had had 24 on board. You know, what are you going to do? Trucks don't come in smaller sizes when you're talking about 10 pallets. Unfortunately, a lot of companies face uh, the same issues. And after having worked with several big logistic companies, uh, the group engineer and I have come up with uh, this solution of easy pallet to tackle majority of these problems. To describe easy pallet in a, in a sentence, easy pallet will uh, connect empty pallet spaces on trucks with businesses that can fulfill this need, meaning with freight forwarders, with groupage agencies, uh, even with small businesses, if you will. Easy Pallet will consist out of two platforms, a website and an app. The main aim of the website uh, is to be used as a meeting space to detail certain requirements as where the pallet is coming from, where it's going to, the height, the weight of the pallet, etc. And based upon those uh, details, we will connect both parties together. As for the app, this is where we will clearly stand out with the competition and bring a little bit of zest and spice to the game, as they say. Um, for the app, um, we will provide live updates of your load. You will know where your load is anytime, so there's no need to call up uh, the agencies to find out where your load is. And in addition, probably the best feature we have is that the drivers will now be able to collect extra, extra loads while being en route itself. This can be compared a little bit to the Uber pool concept, but applied on a bigger scale and with the logistics sector. The main aim of Easy Pallet is to serve as a dual beneficiary, meaning that the people sending out their pallets will now only have to pay for the actual amount of space they take up on a, on a truck and instead of the full truck. And the carriers will be compensated for their empty, for their empty spaces by offering uh, their services on our platform. And this is Easy Pallet in a nutshell. Thank you very much. Aaron, would you like to start us off with our questions? Yes, excellent. Thank you so much. I like the pitch. Like, sounds like an interesting business. Mine is really simple. Where did this idea come from? Oh, uh, it came from uh, numerous um, internships that I had previously, where I noticed that the big uh, corporate companies they just sent out the loads without actually thinking of what is in there. They didn't care if the the truck was completely loaded or not. They just sent it away. And to me, as an intern, I thought, oh, that's such a shame. Not every company has the money just to play around like that and send half a trucks away. And so I started looking it up, and I came to this concept, which I updated, uh, forwarding a little bit in groupage. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, I'm moving on to uh, Peter for the next question. I, I fully understand the uh, need. Um, I'm less clear on what your business model is. The business is, uh, in a nutshell, that uh, there are a lot of trucks out there that are not filled to its full capacity. And by the hand of the online platform and later on an app, we will be able to combine half empty trucks with different loads. So who, who so, would the customer be? Customer will be it would be a crowdsourced company, so it will have from both sides, meaning that the logistic companies will be our customer, as well as any small business owner or a freight forwarder, pallets, pallet senders, anyone who transfers their goods with pallets. 
Yeah. Okay, and um, final question from Renesh. Well done, Nina. So I know, noticed that you need quite a significant amount of investment. Um, and you mentioned that your family and friends are going to support you. Um, it, have they come for, is it 20K? You said that they're going to... Uh, 50, uh, yes. 50K. So have they agreed to that? So depending on the outcomes of today, of course, there ideally there will have to be a prototype made. And regardless of if I get it here or if I get the money to make the prototype in some other way, they will have to see the prototype first before investing any more money. And then after the friends and family investment is in May of 50,000, after that is done, then it can be moved on to the next level of another investment in money infusion a couple of months later. And hopefully a full launch and completely working by the end of December. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nina. Um, and we now have our final pitch of today. And we have uh, Connor, with close by. Hello everybody, my name is Connor and my business idea is close by. Now, as a result of COVID, one of the biggest industries affected were local businesses, resulting in campaigns encouraging us to buy more local goods. However, there was a problem. Last year, local near me was searched more than ever before showing that consumers wanted to know where local businesses were around them without a clear solution. This was also affecting local businesses like Burt's, my local bakery, who is on the brink of bankruptcy. Limited to a niche clientele, he needs an app to get himself out there, an app to notify users of his amazing discounts when they're most likely to use them. This is where Close By comes in. Close By is a business-to-business -business app for retailers to promote themselves on by notifying users of discounts when they're in proximity to a store. Now, when the business signs up for Close By, they will be asked to create a profile, which will give them full domain in creating and deploying discounts on the app. They will also be asked for their bank details, which is how Close By generates an income. We will charge the business a commission of 5% at the end of each month based on the total revenue the business makes as a result of using Close By using smart QR code technology to know exactly how much was spent using the code, as well as when and where the code was used. Now, I know what you're thinking, but will this all work? Well, notifying users based on proximity can increase the business's net sales by six times the amount they were before, whilst also increasing the user engagement. At a time when consumers are 25% more likely to shop local in an industry worth over 15 billion pounds. When asking students at the University of Greenwich, there was an overwhelmingly positive response, with many saying that they would not only use the app, but do so to support local businesses. It was here that I knew my target demographic were Greenwich students. Your investment would mean promoting close by across the Greenwich campus, as well as outsourcing developers to ensure that this app not only looks amazing, but is in every student's hand across Greenwich. With the aim of getting a thousand downloads by the end of the year, having a hundred businesses on the app by next year and reaching over 25 universities using the app by 2023, your investment would help that. I am the right person for the job because I'm an experienced iOS developer. I'm an experienced social media manager and above all, I am determined to succeed. Close by the new and exciting way to shop. And now I open the floor to you. What questions do you have about Close By? Thank you. So Peter, would you like to start off the questions? That was a great presentation. Um, I, I, I was, uh, could, you, could you remind me please, uh, which stops, if any, you've been in contact with in Greenwich? Yeah, that's fine. So. About a month ago, I got into contact with the events manager of the Greenwich Student Union, and I received a response back from a couple of weeks ago saying that he absolutely loved the app idea. Uh, and I hope that this relationship will continue further so that I can start integrating close by within this shops owned by the Greenwich Student Union so that when we deploy the app in August, uh, it's in time for when the students come back and it can be in all of the dorms and all around campus. So you haven't oh, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Pardon, pardon, Peter? 
You haven't spoken to any business. Moving on. Oh. Uh, I've spoken to the events manager who I hope will get me in contact with the businesses owned by the Greenwich Student Union. Okay, so moving on to Ranish for the second question. Well done, Connor. I love the concept and um, I, I think it is a new and exciting way to share deals. Um, I guess a concern or, um, and you can tell me a little bit more about it, but you mentioned about having a really good positive response, but you're from your data, it seems like you've only spoken to 15 people. So I, I just wondered how you can say that from a small amount of people. That's fine. So initially, when I send that out, that was for the initial pitch. I've since spoken to a lot more people and I can, you know, uh, provide you with that data uh, after the pitch, uh, where I've received response after response saying that they love the idea. Uh, they would not only use it, but you know, uh, they want it everywhere, really. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. Okay, and final question from Byron. Sure. So I, I love the idea. Um, I guess my my concern, first of all, is I feel like there's similar things available, you know, with with, with Google and and these various apps, right? And and the, the issue perhaps with uh, the local bakery isn't that um, these tools are not available; it's that they they didn't you know take that time to register themselves, right? So. So with that said, will this app make a difference to that bakery being visible? If so, how? Uh, to answer your question, so at the moment, Google will have a way of seeing where local businesses are around you, but you don't get notifications from them. And above all, you don't get deals directly from the business uh, when you're around. It might direct you to their website or Facebook, but there isn't a, an integrated place uh, to see deals and to get notifications from. And this is where I hope that close by can fill in that gap uh, and become the business, the go-to business uh, for local businesses. Excellent, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Connor. And thank you to all of our students who have pitched today. Uh, you've done a fantastic range of pitches. Uh, you've got a fantastic range of ideas and I know you're gonna make our judges decision very hard. But uh, before our judges decide, um, it's down to you as the audience to decide. Um, you're an active bunch today. I've seen lots of comments in the chat and now it's your time to actually cast your vote. So um, remember, if you've already voted pre, um, pre today, you can still vote, it's a different link. So open up Slido. Um, if you've got a phone, you can use the QR code using your camera. Otherwise you can go to the website, slido.com, put in the code, um, and you will see two different prizes that you get a chance to vote for. So those two, diff two different prizes are best pitch. Uh, so that's focusing on who told the best story with their pitch, uh, who's got, who was the most engaging, who did the best presentation. So that's who you should vote for for your best pitch winner. The other category is most social impact. So that's thinking about which of the ideas you heard today is going to have an impact beyond making money. So which one is going to have the best impact on the environment or health or community? Um, so that's who you should vote for, for that category. Um, so uh, hopefully you're on Slido already. This link's only going to be open for the next few minutes. So please cast your votes now. Uh, we will put the uh, link to Slido in the chat as well. So if you've happened to walk away from your screen, it will be in the chat. Okay, uh, so... Um, I'm very pleased now to announce that we have our Vice Chancellor here, uh, Professor Jane Harrington, and she's going to say a few words. Hi, everyone. First, the first thing I'm going to say actually is absolutely amazing. You, it was fantastic to see you all today. And we often talk at Greenwich about students being the best version of themselves. And what I would say is you were all the best version of yourselves. So you should give yourselves a really a strong pat on your back and actually stand tall and recognize what an achievement it was to give those pitches today. And in the middle of a, middle of a, of a pandemic, even more amazing. So absolutely fabulous. And my and where I was going to start with my actual speech was just to say, you know, my congratulations to all of the 10 finalists for making it through what has been really, I know, really tough competition to secure places in the final today. And a well, well done also to the 100 students and graduates who've taken part this year. I've been 
unbelievably impressed actually with all of your business and social enterprise ideas and all of, and the way that you've thought so innovatively about what you could do and it's been great to see so much participation in the competition despite the pandemic and we should all be really impressed actually that our students are so innovative now participation has come obviously not only from the students but also from the 70 mentors who supported them the six judges who helped with our semi-finals and the three judges on our panel tonight. And what great judges you've been. So thank you, all three of you, for those fabulous questions that you've asked the students, which have really made them think. And that's been really fantastic. And, it's, and what I think is really fantastic is that all three of you are alumni and you're running a number of incredibly successful businesses. And I think what it does do is you all three of you act as amazing role models for the students, showing them the possibilities that their futures can hold. So thank you. I'm so grateful for your time. And I'm so grateful that you're role models and you're alumni of the university. I'm really proud of everyone. Now, the prizes that we're offering today couldn't happen without our community of funders. And so engineers in business who've sponsored us over our £3,000 cash prize for the third year in a row and Santander, who have generously supported two of our two and a half thousand pound prizes tonight, and also provide significant support across a range of university-wide initiatives. We can't do these types of events without you. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Now at Greenwich, we really do focus on equipping our students with the skills they need to excel in the fields of their choice, whether that's through graduate jobs or creating their own companies. And we also know from employers that we talk to that entrepreneurial skills are essential in the workplace of the future. And as we come out of the pandemic, there's no doubt that companies will be looking for innovation. They'll be looking for people who've got an enterprising mindset. I know that I am when I'm employing people and it will be true of so many companies. So whether you end up going from this to being an entrepreneur of the future or whether your enterprising mindset that you've demonstrated helps you into your career. Both of them are, will mean that you've made an absolutely wonderful success. Now, what, once we can, we will open the doors of our enterprise hub, the powerhouse, and we will get you all back in. We can't wait to bring all the wonderful enterprise research, teaching, learning and practice into one physical space and to continue to build our enterprise community in a post-COVID world. Now that's enough from me. I, thank you. I want to thank you all for bringing the competition to life, for making it such a wonderful thing to watch and for being so fantastically professional. And I wish you all the very best of luck. And I will really, I just want to finish again by saying you should be really proud of yourselves to have made it through to today's finals and to have done such wonderful pitches Thanks everyone and good luck to everybody. Thank you very much, Jane, and thank you for joining us and uh, engaging with this today. Um, so uh, we're gonna have a quick break now. So you've got a few minutes to have a stretch, make a cup of tea, get a glass of wine, whatever it is you want. And um, so we'll start again with our talks at 5.30. Welcome back everyone. I um, hope you've had a few minutes to take a short break. And finalists, we do hope that you've had a few minutes to catch your breath. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit, about, little bit about the generator and what we do and ways that you can get involved. So we're the university's um, enterprise team supporting students and graduates. Um, we've started a business and we've um, developing um, entrepreneurial skills. And we do this in a number of ways through funding, through events, through one-to-ones, through co-working space and through training. Um, so there's lots of ways that you can get involved, whether you're a student, um, whether you're um, a guest here today, um, or someone that wants to um, get in, you know, find out more about what, what we're doing. So um, one of the programmes that we run is GRE Hacks, and this is a two day event, um, hack style event, and where students come together um, from across the university. They form teams and they work with an organisation or a company who sets a challenge up for the students. Um, and uh, um, over the two days, they solve those problems and they have to present those ideas and their um, solutions to the client through their pitch, um, which 
then result in some cash prizes and um, opportunity to apply for internships. Now, this is a dynamic two day event um, and it started back in September 2020. So far, we've had three of them and they've all been successful, very well received by both the clients and students. And um, we're now take, doing our fourth one um, in a couple of months in May with Peabody Housing Association solving um, community problems in Thamesmead. So if you want to get involved as a student, um, we'll be sending out an email shortly with an application link. So to do look out for that email. And if you're um, an organization or a company that um, wants to co-host the hack with us, um, then please do get in touch. Um, um, another program that we run is GRE Startups. We've been doing this for a couple of years now, and this is mainly for entrepreneurial skills. So students, again, they come and uh, they, they, they take part from across the university, across faculties, all different year groups, forming teams. They undergo training with us, pitching. Um, and at the end of the weekend, they have to um, pitch their ideas to a panel of judges. Now, a lot of the Enterprise Challenge participants that you see here today would have come out of the GRE Startup. So it's a great um, initiative and kind of, um, foundation for them. So if you want to take part in any of in, in a GRE startup, then please do again look out for our emails and follow us on Instagram. Um, so other things that we do are things like power talks and um, panel events. Now the power talks are um, when we invite industry experts in, so founders mainly, and they come in and talk to students about their um, entrepreneurial journey or some specific entrepreneurship topics which are trending. Um, and if you'd like to be considered um, to um, come and speak at one of our events, do email us. We do have a panel event taking place next week, Wednesday. So if you're interested in joining that, um, my colleague Joe has just posted in the chat the link to register. Now, mentoring is something that we've done for many years and it's something that runs alongside all of our programs um, in different kinds of intensities. So mentoring for um, a boot camp uh, like GRE Startup or agree uh, hack for example this is two to three hours mentoring on a single day um, and mentoring for the enterprise challenge um, is mentoring over a six week time frame and preparing your mentee for the finals if you are interested in this please do email us um, and we'll, we'll send you the um, process of taking part so if you want to come and share your knowledge and your expertise with students and graduates we do want to hear from you um, and uh, you know, we can let you know what the process is after the event. So further funding. Now we received over hundred applications for the Enterprise Challenge back in um, November, and we were absolutely astonished by the, the number that we'd um, received given the pandemic. And we don't want anyone to feel that they haven't won anything today. So we'd have managed to secure some more funding um, if you are, if you'd like to apply for this funding. And this has been um, kindly given to us by Santander. So this is a grant of up to £1,250 per applicant. Um, and the deadline for that is the 4th of April. So if you haven't won today or you took, you've taken part in the Enterprise Challenge and you're trading and you've got some success that you want to um, share with us, please do make an application. And the interviews for, for it will be held very soon after um, the application process. So there's other funding opportunities that are also available to you. So there's the Mayor's Competition, which I am will talk to us a little bit about later. Um, there's Debase, which are looking for social entrepreneurs. There's um, CHAS, um, also another institution looking for um, providing funding for students like yourself. And then there's a new fund which has just become available and this is the Mayor's Resilient Fund. Um, and this is an opportunity um, for you to apply for one of their funding streams. Joe has posted all of this in the chat for you. Um, I just want to um, wish you all the best of luck today. Please do apply for the funding. Um, it's, it's there, it's available for you. Um, it's a great initiative at university and you won't get any other free money from anywhere else. So please do take advantage of that. Um, and I'd just like to now introduce you to Ayan, who's the mayor's intern. Now, Ayan is a student with us at the University of Greenwich and applied on the mayor's um, internship scheme. So she has been working with them and us to um, help promote and encourage participation from University of Greenwich students. Hi, 
Hi everyone, um, so I'm Ayan. Uh, so what we're looking for are great business ideas to solve the challenges facing London today. So we want to help you set up as new businesses to make London clearer, greener and ready for the future. So there are five 20K prizes. So there are four award categories in each one. So there's the environment, the tech, creative industries and health. The fifth award will be the judge's choice chosen from the finalists of any of the four awards. So the criteria is originality. What makes your idea new for London? Clarity, make sure you describe your idea really clearly. Relevance to the aims of the award. How does it have a positive impact on the environment and society? To take part, you will need to fill out an online application form showing your idea and how it meets the criteria and how you will use the prize money. You can submit as many ideas as you like, but each idea can only be entered to one of the four awards. The process when your idea is submitted. So the top 35 of each award will go through a semi-final and make a two minute video pitch. The top six from each award will be selected to pitch their ideas, Dragon Den styles, to a panel of celebrity judges. The winner of each award receives £20,000 in expert advice from City Hall to bring their idea to life. So each year we run pre-application and post-application workshops for students. This year they will be online. So like there'll be the application tips, which is going to be on Thursday, the 8th of April and Tuesday, the 13th of April. We will be offering mentoring to all the finalists and around 20 other applicants who put their name forward. You can register your interest to join the main list or check out the website for more information and advice on applying. The links will be in the chat. The application closes on the 18th of April. I hope you do apply for the Mayor's Entrepreneur Competition and the next winner comes from Greenwich. Um, any questions or queries, you can email me. I'll leave my email in the chat. Thank you. Hi everyone. So the judges are still deliberating. So we're gonna take a short five minute break until they are ready. Welcome back guys, um, thank you for your wait and sorry that it took longer than we expected. Um, so we now have the audience choice votes come back and um, I'll be announcing them in a couple of seconds. Um, so the audience choice for best pitch is Faster Social, Ollie and Harry. Well done guys. Thank you very much guys. That means words. Thank you. We, 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 um, yeah, I think everyone was quite difficult because we only had actually two days to create the pitch. Everyone did. So um, we, we, we do really appreciate that you um, noticed the effort and enjoyed the pitch. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the second audience choice award for most social impact is Green Atom. Well done, Alina. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to say a few words? Uh, I would like to thank uh, all those moms who voted, first of all, because that was my, my first um, audience. Uh, and then all the people here and from the generator team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alina. I'm now going to pass on to Byron, who's going to um, tell us who the winner for the social category is. Excellent. Thank you so much. First of all, I'd just like to congratulate everybody. It was a hard, hard choice. We were we were battling um, and it was it was very difficult to decide. But first of all, congratulations to everybody. So the winner is Bradley from Barrier Free World. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That honestly means the world to me that there's so many people that want to support my idea in creating a barrier for your world. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. And Ranish, if you'd like to introduce, uh, if you'd like to announce the winner for your category, please. 
Thank you, Byron. Uh, again, I'd like to second that second what Byron just said congratulations to you all you all were amazing and those skills that you've used today will definitely be useful in your careers going forward so um yeah well done um so the winner of the commercial category this person I was very very impressed with very clean I love how proactive they are and the results that they have got got already so the award goes to Mahid congratulations You won that team. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Um. You know what? I want to say an absolute well done to every single finalist in here today. You guys have put the work in, and this isn't the end of the road. You're only gonna go like the sky's the limit, and there's you know don't take any take the negative comments, but make it to something positive. I say. Um. Yeah. You can only develop your business. I'm so grateful for this award. I put the work in. Uh, I want to thank. Uh, everyone that supported me, my friends at uni, my friends in the area in Camden, my family, uh, especially my dad. You know, he's, he's always been supporting me since day one. So thanks to my dad, and yeah, thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Okay, um, and I'm thrilled to announce the winner of the three thousand pound prize for the engineering category. Uh, so this prize is going to someone who's got a background in software engineering. Uh, we were really, really impressed with his, uh, with the quality of his pitch and also the quality of the answers that he gave to the judges today. And so the winner of this category is Connor with Close By. Uh, so Connor, would you like to say a few words? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I, I'm getting an Oscar. I just want to thank everybody that ever supported me uh, throughout this entire process, uh, you know, regardless everyone is a winner here in my opinion i think everyone has got a product that is worth so much more than five thousand it is worth so much more uh, i want to thank my girlfriend my family my girlfriend's family my friends everyone who throughout this entire process has said keep going keep going keep going i also want to thank my mentor tina who was last year's winner i, I could not have done this uh without her uh, and I just want to say good luck to who the uh, Entrepreneur of the Year is. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, and I'm now going to pass over to Peter, who is going to announce our final prize of tonight, uh, Greenwich Entrepreneur of the Year, which is a £5,000 cash prize. Uh, thank you very much, Rachel. Um, well, as, as Byron said, we had a great debate, um, but after those discussions, uh, we decided that the overall entrepreneur, overall winner and Greenwich Entrepreneur of the Year was Kumba and uh, Siva. Um, and I very much hope that you managed to uh, stop us having coffee cups left around the place in this country, like, like maybe in India, and uh, that you repeat the profitable uh, growth that you've seen in India here. And I look forward to seeing what emerges. Sure, sure. It's a great honour. The pleasure to get the prize. So, yes. I thank all, all the three judges and uh, I thank all the generator, GRE generator team. So, uh, Rachel, Mia, Joe, uh, everyone. So, uh, I thank my mentor at this time. So, uh, yeah, Nazina Jain helped me a lot. And I thank all my friends. I'm actually spe speechless right now. Well done. Okay, so that is uh, that is it for today. And so I want to start by saying a huge congratulations again to all of our students who pitched today. Um, not only our prize winners, uh, all of the final 10 have been of such stiff competition to get here. Uh, so well done. And we look forward to working uh, with all of you over the coming months and years. And um, thanks to our audience for participating so much today and staying engaged and, and staying online. Um, really good to see so many of you here. Uh, thanks again to our judges, um, our judges not just from today who've had a very difficult job deciding on those prize winners, uh, but also our judges from our semi-finals. Um, and finally, thank you uh, to my team, to the Generator team, um, who have been working tirelessly behind the scenes for the last six months to make this happen. Um, and I'm just going to give a special uh, thank you to Zhao, who is our comms officer, who is, he's set up quite a fantastic studio arrangement in front of me right now. Um, and he's really made this work technically without a hitch. Uh, but thank you to all of you. Uh, so yeah, um, good night. And I hope you all have brilliant evenings. <laughs>